Okay, how's it going? And we're back for some more Creation Club contents released recently. Indeed, this lot looks actually quite decent and includes Umbra, an artifact from Oblivion and Morrowind, Spell Knight armor, coming in three variants, Arms of Chaos, where you try to restore the artifacts of Chaos, and you'll get two new staves, an ancient ring, and an enchanted amulet. And finally, Shadowfoot Sanctum, a thief's home in Riften, made by Eleonora. But before we start, I'd like to give a big shout out and thanks to the following for helping me out with info and thoughts and all the following Creation Club stuff. And that's Draconian Freak, Yarvik Rules, Cry Havoc, and the General 2396. I love you guys. So with that being said, we're just going to dive in with Umbra. Now this is the biggest mod of the batch, uh, as far as I'm aware, and comes in at 500 credits, which is $5 or £4 in real money. Umbra is a new release from Creation Club that adds the Umbra Sword located in a new dungeon known as Champion's Rest. The history of this Daedric artifact is recounted in the rise and fall of those who have wielded it, forged from the wicked hands and vile mind. Legend says that Umbra itself lives. It echoes whispering from the wind halls of Champion's Rest. Some even say the sword wields its bearer. But to find the answer, you must first defeat Umbra yourself. Now before we start we've got a bit of lore. Umbra was destroyed at the climax of Lord of Souls, the second of two novels written by Greg Keyes. This took place circa 4E40, over 160 years before the events of Skyrim. The Umbra sword was enchanted by the ancient witch Nanra Ware, I think that's how you say her name, and its sole purpose was the entrapment of souls. Used in conjunction with a soul gem, the sword allows the wielder the opportunity to imprison an enemy's soul in that gem. Nainra was executed for her evil creation, but not before she is able to hide the sword. The Umbra sword is very choosy when it comes to its owners, and therefore remains hidden until a worthy one is found. In Oblivion, Umbra is a Bosma warrior who can be found in the Aelid ruins of Vindicel. She named herself after a sword, the powerful artifact Umbra. Now Umbra's real name was Lenwyn, which actually sounds very Welsh or Cornish I must say, and she lived in Pell's Gate where she was Eroke the Wise Apprentice. She found Umbra, although where she located it is unknown. The sword's need for souls drove Lenwyn to pick fights and kill many villagers. When driven out of town, Umbra became a mercenary. It seems she regretted her actions and she retreated to Vindicel to prevent any further deaths. She spent all her time wandering around in the last room inside the Aelid Ruin. She never even stopped to eat or sleep. Umbra also appeared during Morrowind, along with another character who had named himself after the sword. As part of his daedric quest, Clavicus Vile wanted to get the sword back. And for you Oblivion fans, the track Daedra in Flight from Oblivion is added and will play during the boss fight. And what a fight that is, the final boss fight. Though I didn't really know this, I was too busy running away. Okay, to the real stuff. As usual, the quest is automatically loaded into your quest list. Uh, no running around for this one as we're simply asked to travel to Champion's Rest, which is a barrow near Riften and Fort Greenwall. Not a particularly difficult route. I was only attacked by a single bandit and a bear or two. The barrow itself is of medium size with the usual puzzles and some old friends, the Draugr, and I really enjoyed this barrow. It was a lot of fun. And make sure you come lightly loaded, there's plenty of loot to be had, and I can't confirm if the loot is leveled or not, but I'm going to assume it is. There's stacks of mushrooms to be had for all you alchemists out there, so make sure you grab them for sure. So after you've made your way through the barrow, you come to a huge amphitheatre and a monster of a boss fight. Maybe because I'm a bit rusty and was in a bit of a rush to get the sword, I didn't play my usual way, but my character's tanky enough and the first time Sophia, Indigo and Genesis were put down before I was killed. So I learned my lesson and went in and did things a little bit differently. Now I'm not going to give you any spoilers, except to say maybe bring a Storm Atronach or two. It may help, that's all I'm saying. So now we've got the sword, let's smith it and see what we have. And FYI, you'll need an ebony ingot to do this. And we'll start with the aesthetics. Now I've already heard people calling the sword bland, and I totally disagree. 
very much like Sunder, a previous Creation Club offering, this sword is actually quite stunning, very nicely detailed and totally in law. However, I appreciate beauty is in the eye but I the beholder, so this is entirely subjective. But personally, I like subtle things and I do like this. Now, the enchantments, it's actually a pretty decent one. If a target dies within 20 seconds, it fills a soul gem. It absorbs 25 points of health and it absorbs 25 points of stamina. This is actually a very decent enchantment, especially at low levels and great for this weapon's law. Yeah, very, very good. Okay, so let's look at the base stats. Now, I was showing a damage of 28 with no perks in two-handed, but some XP gained from testing stuff. However, another Skyrim player on a forum called Cry Havoc confirmed the actual base stats are damage 26, weight 23. Now, seeing that this gives you two higher damage points than a Daedric Greatsword, it makes this a fearsome weapon indeed. The stats after improvement with 30 points of XP and no perks and two-handed at all, I got to damage 101 and weight 23 and I'm sure it could be taken further. Okay, so what do I think of this mod? Well, I think the dungeon is a lot of fun. That boss fight is pretty damn epic by Skyrim standards and you walk away with a lot of decent loot and mushrooms. The sword itself is actually a lovely thing when you look at it closely, does a decent amount of damage and most certainly is in keeping with the lore. But as with all these mods, I always question the price. $5 or £4 in real money is a lot for a weapon that is only really feasible at lower levels. I do wish you could disenchant these weapons and also craft them to put your own enchantments on. Uh, on them as you progress through the game, then maybe players would use these mods for entire runs. That being said, you can't. So I just don't see the value in this mod. Don't get me wrong, I like it, but at this price point, I just can't see the value. I would suggest waiting till it's included in a bundle or maybe a sale. But as usual, these are just my opinions and they're no more valid than anyone else's. I just hope I've given you enough information to decide whether this mod is for you or not. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the vid and a special special thanks again to Draconian Freak, Yarvik Rules, Cry Havoc, The General 2396. See you later guys. Love you. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please leave a like and a comment and don't forget to subscribe. Ooh, and hit that bell thingy for more of my videos. Love you.